Good morning. I don't even know if anybody's gonna get on, but this was not planned. It's just something that I felt like maybe we could do this morning. It's a PD day at school. So um, it's not something that I get to do every single morning now, but I don't have to go in until a little bit later this morning <clears throat> because students aren't there. So um, anyways, I don't want to wait too long because I don't have a lot of time and I want to post this recap to YouTube. So, um, today we are going to be jumping into Galatians chapter 1 verses 13 through 14. Galatians chapter 1 verses 13 through 14 is where we're going to land this morning. And, um, I just want to tell y'all that as I've been going through this, I've been seeing that man Galatians is something that <clears throat> I feel like a lot of us need right now especially myself as we think about how the church was going back to traditions instead of just relying on God and hoping that their religious practices was what was going to be the thing that you know kept them or whatever not really going back to their religious practices because they were Gentiles but going to religious practices instead of just relying on God and loving on God and letting God speak through them and use them and call them to do all the things. And I feel like that's kind of where our world is right now. Like looking around, I feel like we are, myself included, we're so guilty of doing all the Christian things. <laughs> but when God interrupts those things, are we willing to allow him to interrupt those? Like we can do this and we can check all the boxes and we can get up and we can do a Bible study. We can read a five minute devotion. We can say a prayer. We can post a Bible verse. We can do all the things that make us look like a Christian. But are we actually letting God interrupt our plan so that he can call us to what he's called us to today? And that, that has been convicting my heart so heavily over this past few weeks, like reading through this. And so <clears throat> past two weeks reading through this and so that's what we're going to talk about a little bit this morning but Galatians 1 verses 13 and 14 are what we're going to look at today and it says for you have heard of my former way of life in Judaism how I used to persecute the church of God beyond measure and try to destroy it this is Paul by the way and I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries among my countrymen being more extremely zealous for my ancestral traditions <laughs> Gosh, like so much to unpack in two verses. First of all, we're talking about Paul and Paul is writing to the church of Galatia and Paul had just left there and spoken the gospel over them and many had said that they were saved and they got converted and they started believing in Jesus and then he left and and it's like a short time that he's writing this to them and, and these false teachers have come in and been like, no, you can, you have to be circumcised, you have to do all these things to be in the Jewish cool club basically is what they were saying like. You have to follow all of the laws. You have to follow these specific things to be able to be in this exclusive club of Christians, you know. And um, Paul's writing to them and he's like, no, that's not the story of grace. It's different now. It's different now. It's different now. Like we have Jesus. We have Jesus is our, our way, our truth, our life. We don't have to follow. He came and fulfilled the law. He didn't abolish it. He fulfilled it. So now we just trust in him and we are made righteous, not because of the things that we can do, because he fulfilled the law on our behalf so that we could get to God, like so that God can dwell with us so that we can be righteous and holy and all of these things. And so as I was reading this, um, the first part it says, for you have heard. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but... There's been a lot of times where <laughs> um, the opinions and the things that people have said about me and about my past or about things that I've done have overshadowed the calling of God on my life. And that may not be what Paul is referring to here. But we know that Paul persecuted the church. I mean, he admits to it right in these couple of verses. But we know that he actually took out Christians. Like, that's that was what he did before God met him on the road to, Dam to Damascus and changed his story. And so, he says, for you have heard. 
who we are versus who we've been is just a testimony of God's goodness, grace, and power. It doesn't keep us there. Like, we're not stuck in our past. We're not, we're not stagnant there. We don't have to stay there. We don't have to feel like there's no way out. We don't have to let those things overshadow what God can do now. We use those things and utilize those things to show how much God can transform any person into being usable, so not lukewarm, for the kingdom into being a person that is on purpose and on mission for the kingdom of God. That's what Paul is saying. Like I was taken from this place of persecuting the actual church that believed in Jesus. And I was brought into a place of being used by God. But he's like, you've heard of my former way of life. My former way of life in what? In Judaism. Let me tell you something. Former way of life, Paul is not the same person. He's saying, this is who I was before. This isn't who I am now. I'm not the same. I've been changed. It reminds me of that song. Not the same. I've been changed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I think the name of it is redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Sin no longer holds Paul captive. All of those things, all of those those things that he did, all of those things that he was traditionally drawn to because that's what the Jews said had to be done if you were going to be a Jew. All of those things that they harped on as Pharisees and Sadducees and religious leaders of what was supposed to be, you know, the the hands and feet of Jesus and God on this earth. Um, all of those things he left behind. And I I wanted like I wanted so bad to um anyways let me let me stop that thought before I chase the squirrel. Revelations twenty one four is where my heart led me to. Like the Holy Spirit just led me to this verse. Um and I know that you've heard it because it's it's a very popular verse in Revelation, but it says He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more, and neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. The former things have passed away. The NS, NASB says first things. The first things have passed away. So I started looking at this and I started comparing Paul saying former here, my former way of life, and this former that we're talking about right here in Revelation. And I was like, how do these two compare? What are these two things? Are they the same word? Are they the, orig- the same in the original language? And they're not. Exactly. Okay. They're not the same word. And neither one of these verses were referenced in the accordance um, for each other. But the former or first things in Revelation 21 4 is about God reversing the curse once and for all that entered through human sin. Death, mourning, crying, and pain entered into our lives through sin. And when God restores what we've broken, all of these things no longer exist. When God in the end time restores us to our former purpose before Adam and Eve took the fruit and decided that that being seeing like God and being like God was better than dwelling with God and obeying him, which we do that every day. So we can try to blame Adam and Eve all that we want, but we make the conscious decision to think that our way is better than his way all the time, even as Christians. So, We really can't point a finger without four pointing back at our own selves. But when God in the end time restores and wipes away all of those former things, what he's doing is he's wiping away the first things. He's wiping away the first things that separated us from the love of God in the beginning. He's wiping away sin. He's taking away all of the things that cause these other things in scripture, in this scripture, which is there's going to be death no more because death is a repercussion of sin there's going to be no more mourning no more crying no more pain for the former things have passed away and i have heard a preacher say this before and i will never forget it as long as i live but i am ready for that day because i have some former things even yesterday i have some former things i have former things in my life that i don't want to be dug up that i don't want to be you know, brought back to attention. I have former things in my life, even yesterday, former things that I'm embarrassed of and ashamed of, and I don't want to harp on. I don't want that to be a part of my story, but it is. And so what Paul is saying here is I left my former way of life. So he's not talking about um, just sin in general. He's talking about specifically in Judaism, but I think that those two can connect here too, because Paul is still he, he persecuted the church. He's not, you know, bragging about 
what he used to do. What he's saying is, I left that behind because I sought something better. Because there was something else out there, Jesus, that was more fulfilling. That was the ultimate fulfillment. That was all that I need. That had called me into a life that was greater than all of these principles that I could have um, you know, kept going in Judaism to, you know, be a leader in the church and be like all what all of the people thought was the pinnacle of success. And then this next part says how I used to persecute the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it. It's crazy how destroying the church God established through Jesus was a part of Paul practicing the Jewish religion. Is that not blow anybody else's mind? Like it is, it's so crazy to me. That literally a part of the Jewish tradition, so practicing Jewish religion, which is what Judaism means, was literally persecuting the very church that Jesus came and established through his apostles. That Jesus came and established through his his death and resurrection, his life, death, and resurrection. Jesus came and established that. And literally the chosen people, and I know that there's so many depths to why, why that was happening and all of there's so much that you have to unpack there to understand that this is all a part of God's plan he is sovereign over all of this you know this isn't a trick by the Jewish people they're not you know tricking God or they're not going against what he you know what he is sovereign over it's nothing like that there's so much to unpack there so I don't want you to think that they're playing God or that they're whatever um but we don't really have time for that because that would, I think, take about two hours <laughs> to unpack altogether. But he says how I used to persecute the church of God beyond measure and try to destroy it. Let me tell you something. No weapon will prosper against God's purpose. And God is continually, continually meeting people where they are even now, even still. God is not... God is not unavailable to reach people right now today. And he does it through us, through the people who are willing to leave behind the former way of life and the opinions of others that they cast over us and to follow God's call on our life and to stop saying like, "Ah, maybe I don't need to do that because somebody's going to judge me. Or maybe if I start posting Christian content or if I start, you know, posting a Bible verse, if I start trying to share Jesus with somebody, somebody's going to come at me and be like, do you really think you're equipped for that? First of all, the only thing that equips you is the Holy Spirit that is within you once you receive salvation. You don't need a theology degree. I don't have one. Certainly, you don't need to be some guru in the Bible. You need to follow God You need to know when his Holy Spirit is speaking to you because you read his word and you know his voice. And you just need to say yes to the callings that he places on your life. The big things, the small things, the in the moment things, the in the second things. We say yes and that's how God uses us to be the hands and feet of his kingdom. So verse 14 says, And I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries among my countrymen. He was advancing in this. Like he was persecuting the church. He was taking out these people who were following Jesus. And he was persecuting them. What? Like that's insane. And it was advancing him. Y'all, I can tell you. I have I have seen success this side of heaven. I have been in a place where I would have been considered successful by the world like by by the world's standards that is success not like millionaire success I'm just saying like a title or a position or something like that I have seen that and I can tell you there is so much corruption that goes into getting to that place if you are not placed there by God himself If God himself does not say, this is where I want you because this is where I'm going to use you for your kingdom. If it's not a King David type of situation where you're pulled out of the the pasture and placed in the palace. And even then he succumbed to, to, to the temptation of what that title could bring. If it's not a situation like that, I'm telling you, chasing after worldly success and positions and titles and money and all the things that this world likes to say is the pinnacle of what we should be reaching for. It will leave you so empty, so lonely, so dry. It will leave you absolutely malnourished in your faith because there is so much corruption on the way to the top. 
there really is and it i've seen it in multiple scenarios in multiple different things not just in one place and i'm telling you it's because the enemy knows that that's how he can get us away from what god has called us to do and into what we think is better and if you'll and it, it is all sourced from pride so if you look at how the how the enemy works sin is sourced in pride the first sin we want to be like god instead of dwell with god and obey him every other sin we think that what we can do is better than what god has told us is actually better it's all sourced in that it's all sourced in that and so what paul is saying is like doing all of this was advancing me in the practice of jewish religion <clears throat> Not only that, but this was elevating his status in the Jewish religion. Religion, He was being elevated to success because he was persecuting the church. So, the next part says, Beyond many of my contemporaries and among my countrymen. I mean, you know that in scripture it talks about how Paul was the tippy, tippity, tippity top. Like, if you're going to measure his success by Jewish religion, I mean, he would have been the pinnacle. He was, he was it. He was the it man. But guess what? That still didn't satisfy. That still didn't lead him to the foot of the cross. That still didn't get him to Jesus. I like that. That's what we're aiming for. Like we're aiming for Jesus. Like, and I'm telling you, success will make you miss it. Whether it's religious, spiritual, earthly, workly, whatever you want to say, like it, it will. You'll miss it. You'll miss Jesus by focusing your eyes on something else that you think is going to fulfill you. Especially if you think that it's going to make you important. Um, the next thing, and I'm speaking from experience with all of the love. I'm speaking from experience with all of the love. <laughs> because I, I left all of those things. Multiple different things. Seeking after other things that I thought was going to fulfill me. And now I'm a teacher in the public school system. Which, I'm, which people do are like... Yes, I couldn't do what you do, but it, we're like the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to people with education. <laughs> it's like, you are, you're just, you don't make a killing. You're not going to, to ever be rich and famous. You're not going to ever be like the pinnacle of success. And you're just there to love on people. You're just literally there to love on people. And God brought me to this place and he had to take me through all of that to show me that this right here, following the calling that God has placed on your life, is that's success this side of the kingdom of heaven. That's what success looks like, is, is living with that peace that surpasses understanding, is living with Jesus every single day and following his calling that he's placed on your life, no matter what the world thinks, no matter what people saying, why would you do that? Why would you make that decision? Blah, blah, blah. It, it's about following Jesus and the call that he's had on your life because that's what matters. Okay, the next part says, being more extremely zealous. <laughs> For my ancestral traditions. Being more extremely zealous. For my ancestral traditions. Here's the question that I wrote down. Are we more on fire about our traditions? Or about our savior? Are we willing to lay down our religion. For the relationship Jesus is calling us to? Or are we more concerned with just looking holy. And obedient. Rather than actually being holy. And obedient. And boy, did that step on every toe that I have. Probably some fingers too. Because y'all, <sighs> there's been a lot of times in my life where the perception of holiness was more important than actually being called to be, walk in holiness, which is what we are as Christians. Do you know that, somebody told me this one time, do you know that when you're saved, you are holy, like Jesus is holy. And that seems like, whoa, that's sacrilegious, like hush your mouth. No, 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 that can't be true. I am not Jesus. But the Bible says we are made righteous. We are made holy. It's not because we did anything to get ourselves there. It's because the what Jesus did on the cross was enough for God to look at us and to dwell with us and to be with us because Jesus made us holy and made us righteous. It's not because of anything our little feeble selves have done. 
because we like to we like to fumble the ball. We like to just mess everything up. But Jesus came and he came so that we could be holy and righteous before God, so that we could dwell with God, so that we could go to heaven, so that we could fulfill his purpose, this side of heaven. And so this right here, he was more extremely zealous for his ancestral traditions. I couldn't get it off my mind. Are we more focused on looking the part of a Christian or actually being the hands and feet of Christ? That's a question that cuts like deep into the heart of every single thing that we decide to do this side of heaven. It cuts deep into the purpose and the pride and the, and the, just all of it. Like, why are we doing, what's the, what's the point? Why are we doing it? What's the point of me doing this? Is it because God has called me to do it? And so he's going to be sovereign over it? Or is it because I want this for myself? Or I just want people to perceive me a certain way or look at me a certain way, you know? Um, oh man, and I, I'm telling you, like, it's been something in my life that I've had to evaluate literally on an hourly basis. Why am I making this decision? Is it because God has led me to this or is it because I just really like the clout that I get because of it or the pats on the back, you know? Um... The next couple of verses that we'll go through, um, I may do a live tomorrow and try to get through some of these that are later today, but I'm a little behind because I didn't realize this week was going to be quite so busy with a couple of birthdays and or a birthday and different things like that in my church, but um, I have my notes that I'll post for y'all over in the Our Holy Hustle community, and um, yeah, I plan to go live some more on TikTok and then post them, upload them to YouTube. Uh, and I also wanted to throw this out there. Um, for the sake of time in the morning sometimes, the only thing that I can do to be able to talk to you guys about like what I'm studying and what I'm reading and different things like that is to get ready while I'm doing it. So to get ready for like do to get ready for the day while I'm doing it. But I don't want it to seem like I'm anyways, it's just a thought. So, um, if you have anti-thoughts about that, you can definitely send me a message and express your concern because I, I'm telling you, like, I, I've been back, I've been going back and forth with it for a couple of days, um, and, or actually a couple of months, but anyways, um, I'm going to upload these to YouTube and, um, hopefully be able to do them a little bit more these days since I am feeling just a smidge better, um, but, where will the notes be posted? They'll be posted in Patreon. Um, the Our Holy Hustle community. I'll upload the YouTube video and then I'll post them there. Oh, that was that's sweet, Joseph. I, I'll do that. If you want to hang out with us while getting ready, you don't have to always preach. <clears throat> okay, let's pray. Let's pray. I want to pray um, for us. And then um, we're going to go and do all the things and shine the light on Jesus. Dear God, I come to you today and I just thank you so much for the people who want to know more about you, for the calling that you've placed on our life, for us to be able to go and be the hands and feet of you, God, to to spend time at your feet, God, to spend time serving others, to love you more and to love people the way that we're supposed to because of the love that you've poured out over us. God, I pray that we would cast aside all of our traditions, all of our our pride, all of our ways that we think are higher, God, for your way, for your so sovereign, holy, amazing way that you will use us this side of heaven for your glory. God, we love you so incredibly much. Forgive us where we failed you, God. Help us to hear your voice so clearly today and the things that you're leading us to. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, you guys. I love y'all, and I will see y'all um, later. So I hope that y'all have a great day, and I will see y'all later. Bye, you guys.